Good afternoon and welcome to IUP. Before I start, I would like to thank a student here, actually a couple of them, and I saw her right in the row, right in the last row on the right. Her name is Dora Smith, and if she'd come forward for just a second. Dora taught my 11-year-old in the fifth grade class, and he says that she made him behave. <laughs> and he actually learned something. So thank you on behalf of the Marion Center Schools, and thank you for caring, and thank you to IUP for sending her to him. I also like to thank Jennifer Casanova for being a bright spot in our Lutheran campus ministry. I began here 15 years ago. This is my last public act at IUP. When I started here, dorms still looked like dorms. <laughs> Instead of small cities and Wi-Fi was a dream and we still had floppy drives. And I had hair. <laughs> Before that, I worked at the VA hospital for neuropsych disorders, which is a mental hospital. I wasn't a patient, really. And before that, Lewisburg Federal Penitentiary. I thought this would be different. <laughs> it wasn't different. <laughs> but I came giving thanks, and I'm leaving giving thanks. And you, too, and your parents and friends and family and all the people gathered here today are the same way. They came giving thanks. You came giving thanks. Some of your parents gave thanks when you left. <laughs> and now there's a hot tub in your bedroom. <laughs> or whether it was just thanks to get away from your parents. Or whether it was giving thanks to start a new life with and taking care of kids. Today you say thanks by gathering here and celebrating the people who love you. So bear with me. You're not here for you. You're here for them. I reminded the Interfaith Council that I was leaving and they asked me to speak. I said it was likely that I would say or could say anything. So bear with me for a moment because I will not apologize for who I am. I will not apologize for being passionate or standing for something. I will not apologize for saying something is wrong. And I hope you don't either. You can fire me. <laughs> you fire me for saying that the university is the last bastion of hope against a world that would anesthetize us all. A world of thinkers and experimentation, a world of ideals and ideas, a world where tattoos and ties are equally welcome, of principles and hope that is as it ought to be, a world that fights against the machine of the business of learning and rages against the dark night of the lowest common denominator. It hopes that we might be good at something and that that good would be shared with the world. My dad sprayed cars for General Motors. After the war, my mother and he left Ohio and drove all the way across country to California and started their life with $12, living in a 43 Plymouth. He said he sprayed over a million cars, but I calculated it was over two. 
During work, he fell in the acid bath up to his knees. They took him to the hospital, and three weeks later, he returned with very little skin on his legs to work. He wanted something better. He wanted something better than the endless world of production with no conscience. I lived in Youngstown, Ohio, where the cloud of smoke and smog enveloped us each day. My Uncle John worked at the Youngstown Sheet Tube for 50 years. He lived in the mill, a constant view of it. His leg was cut off in an accident there. He returned a month later carrying a wooden leg with no joint. He walked a mile to work. He wanted something better for his children, better than the endless world of production with no conscience. He never had a car. He saved everything because he'd use it some other time. And he lived on a hill with Machios, Moliternos, and Santeses, and some people who changed their names because they wanted to be real Americans. In the fifth chapter of the book of Exodus, the Israelites come to Pharaoh and say, we want a day off. That's all we want. We want a day off. We want a Sabbath to celebrate and feast. And Pharaoh says they can't leave because they have to make more bricks. They have to make more bricks. More bricks for pyramids, more bricks for roads, more bricks for palaces. Just make more bricks and you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Forget your God, forget your passion, forget your hope, and you'll be secure, Pharaoh says, unassailably sure. And even after the Israelites decided that wasn't good enough, they venture into the wilderness, and some come back because they couldn't stand living in freedom. For those Israelites, for my dad, Uncle John, for those gathered here, for the professors and staff here, from the least to the greatest, they all share one thing. As different as you all are, and you're different. <laughs> they want a better life. They want a better life. And they think that thinking and ideas and passion and commitment and learning give at least some chance to have freedom. Freedom ain't free, and freedom ain't safe. Freedom is not sameness. It's not thinking the same. Professors like Jay Mills have given their lives to something, and if that's not passion, I don't know what is. They sacrifice all their ideas for you, and they lay those ideas on the altar of learning. They don't want you in the brickyard. They don't want you there because they hope for better. They're willing to go into the wilderness so you can find your own promised land, and they know that you will have to tackle the questions of your generation and not ours. Thank you, Dor, because I hope you taught Nate to do that. They know that all it takes is one dreamer with passion, one person, and they hope in each of you that you might be that one who makes a longer-lasting light bulb, who writes music for the ages, who reaches into the mind and discovers a new star and who can change the world of a fifth grader. They know only so well the dangers of a university that only trains and doesn't educate because the brickyard remains when no one questions it. And they're all crazy, all your professors, all of them. They're all crazy. They were all crazy. This peculiarly strange, fantastic, and curious world that studies the public but separated from it. I was reading about Martin Luther in 1527. He had the plague for eight months. While people were dying all around him, he delivered 60 sermons, 100 letters, 100 lectures, 15 major articles, a commentary and translation on the Old Testament, and trips to speak, not to mention the birth of his daughter. He was crazy just like all of you. The 
as much as we and Dr. Werner and Rhonda Lucky can feel the horror in the real world touching our precious space here. And we know it does. We have to agree with Bart Giamatti. On his first day at Yale, he sent the following memo to the Yale faculty, one I didn't see from Dr. Werner. He said, in order to repair what Milton called the ruin of our grandparents, that is evil, I wish to announce that henceforth, as a matter of university policy, evil is abolished and paradise is restored. And I trust all of you will do whatever possible to achieve this policy directive. It is policy directive for each university. We know the real world touches us. I've been part of that horror and part of that joy. But we also know a real world, if only in our hearts, that rages against the brickyard and thinks that even band can solve the problems of the world. It's not a panacea. It's not our savior. It is our hope. Our hope that you will be passionate about something in a world that tries to tame everything, that you will be excited, and excitement somehow represents being out of control. It doesn't. That you will be humble enough to read once in a while because you want to know what you don't know. And that you will wonder because wonder is the remedy for a world too large to control. that you remember this moment and come back to it when you think that the whole world is against you, because it's not. We're gathered here to hope in you and say to you that your brickyards don't have to be ours. We come here to wish that you discover joy in knowing that nothing can take this away from you, not a thing. And we hope you will risk living that you will chance having passion, that you will hazard to choose joy and delight and amazement, that you will embrace the world with humility and thanksgiving, and each day that begins and ends with gratitude, each day will be a day worth living and a blessing to us all. Thank you to IUP.